It is a day that we come together in spirit and truth and just give God praise for all the glory that he's done for us. And praise God, today is also a day where we, you know, normally in, in the celebrations and festivals, they, they celebrate this uh, thing called Mother's Day, um, giving thanks to the mothers that have given us birth. And, you know, um, this special day is just an encapsulation of God's work because God is so wonderful. It still boggles the mind of many people to think about the fact that uh, there is creation through, you know, our mothers. That these things happen to build each strong man in this room and in uh, every room there at home as well. So we want to praise God for that. Uh, we want to thank God for giving life, most importantly. And we want to thank God for the fact that we had another beautiful week. We had a beautiful week. I know we had a beautiful week because we have this Sabbath to end off the week. And that makes the week beautiful, no matter what has happened. Um, God is merciful. And first and foremost, I just want to start off this sermon with just an excerpt of praise. I want to look at Isaiah 25, verses 1. You can see it um, behind me. Hopefully, it's presented well, where it says, O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithful and truth. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I ask you that uh, we may be touched and turned and Lord, that you may just guide us in our hearts and our minds. I pray that this sermon may be spoken through you that you may guide my mind, my words, my lips, everything that I do today, that it may be in your name, giving glory to you in the way that you desire. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So there was once a man. He came into work, and he was outstanding at his job. He was at the top of his sales. He was a salesman, and he was at the top of this. He would elevate the company with his workmanship. He would compliment his coworkers daily. He would laugh. He would make jokes that really brought peace to the hearts of everyone around him. He would actually create friendships with his bosses and lighten the load of work that his boss had to take care of. This man, this man was so good that his boss even told him that he's due for promotion. His work was so outstanding, in fact, that he needed to be raised to a position whereby his company standards had to be based off of him. The standards of the company was based off of this man. This man was, as we look at it today in this society, the perfect work man. Perfect man, patient to everyone around him, compassionate, hardworking inclusive, and kind, as these are the qualities that he upheld at his company. But there's another side to this man. He would come home and yell that if his dinner wasn't made in time, that he would put his wife out on the street. He would constantly push her around because he believed that she was less than him. But there's a truth about this situation. This man was the leader of his home, and he ruled it with fear. He showed no patience in his home, no compassion in his home. He was not willing to put in the work to make anyone but himself happy in his house, and he never included his wife in the plans he made. He was not kind. So 
So my sermon today is going to be about being kind. Kindness is free. Kindness is not owed, nor is it conditional. It is not a grievance. It will not make you weak. Kindness is mandatory. Kindness is a supplement. Kindness breathes life. So kindness must be from the Lord, respectfully. There has been a death in this society. It was tragic and sorrowful, and it was, of course, very important. It was very much needed in our daily lives. And I am talking about the death of kindness. You see, there was a problem with this man. He was acting on his job. He showed love to everyone around him, his peers, his boss. He showed them kindness and respect. But when he got home, he did not have any kindness within him. It died when he got home. The kindness dwelling inside him was only but a performance to make his workplace life happy. But we know what happened when he got home back to his resting place. Because you can fool your entire work environment, you can fool your friends, you can even sometimes fool your aunts and uncles and cousins, but when you get home, the mask must come off. He was not truly kind. Today, I want us to read together. I want us to read our Bibles together. I want us to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And if it's hard to see above me, then I will wait for anyone to bring up a Bible or a phone so that we can read this together. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we'll read it together starting from verses 9. We'll end off in verses 15 together. When you have it, say amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, starting at verse 9, ending at verse 15. 1 Thessalonians, sorry. Get them mixed up, but yes, it's 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We'll start at verse 9. We'll go to 15. Amen? 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 All right, we'll start together. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do. Verse 12, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, Comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. We but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Amen? Don't render evil for evil, but follow that which is good. Do you see what we have here? We have kindness in our lives for older folks. We have no issues showing our friends kindness. 
and we show kindness to our bosses because that's on what happened to this man in the story. He showed kindness to his boss, but sometimes we seem to forget that kindness should be our default behavior. When we get home to our wives and husbands, when we associate with those who are under our care, when we talk to the ones who serve us, do we show them kindness? Kindness is a default. Not just our friends or to our colleagues, but kindness is actually supposed to be a default. Not just to our boss or the ones who we need to satisfy for our own greed, but kindness is a default. Jesus showed us kindness when he helped the leper in Matthew 8, verses 1 to 4. Lepers at this time were outcasts. They were outcasts of society, the lowest of the low. At this point, you could not go near them. That sounds a little bit familiar to a certain disease of today. You could not touch them. They were separated from their loved ones, from their friends, and from their work as they had to flee in exilement from their own homes. You would hear them before you saw them as they had to scream out, unclean, unclean. But Jesus, but Jesus took pity on this leper. He healed him of his disease. He didn't see this man as a leper, but as a human being who was sick and needed help. Jesus taught us kindness to the weak. The type of kindness that goes beyond social stereotypes, kindness that was free. If only we could just develop the genuine compassion of those in need. But praise God that his kindness was on default. Jesus showed kindness when he entered into Jericho and was passing through. He met a man there by the name of Zacchaeus. This man was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. Luke chapter 19 and verses 1 to 10. It shows that he wanted to see who Jesus was. He was short. He could not see over the crowd. You know the story. So he climbed up in a sycamore fig tree to see Jesus um, that was coming his way. And then when Jesus arrived, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house. Today. So he came down and welcomed him gladly. This was a man who was hated on by his peers and in some sense was literally looked down on. This fascinates me. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be a guest of a sinner. That's what they said about Jesus. Jesus took this ridicule and he chose to still be kind. Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, hereby, here and now, I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Praise God, because Jesus said, today, salvation has come to this house because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. What a friend we have in Jesus. Because praise God that his kindness was on default. Jesus showed us kindness when he was at Jacob's well. He was weary with his journey. Thus he sat at the well. And there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. This woman was not a Jew. She was a Samaritan. She was not only that, but she was a woman who had about five husbands. Not only that, but she was currently with a man who was not one of them. But Jesus saith unto her, give me to drink. Then, you know, the woman of Samaria said unto him, how is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. 
You see, for him to even speak with her was absolutely unheard of. She was not of his social, economical class at the time. Why would a Jew speak with her? She was not a Jew. This is the separation that man has made in our unknowing, unkindness. But Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. With everything she has, he still presented to her living water because Jesus is merciful. Jesus is kind. Ephesians 5.25, it says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. So we remember this perfect working man, the perfect man at work, was missing something. And what he was missing was very important. He was missing Christ-like love. Because if he loved like he was called to love, he would have shown love to his wife. Husband, love your wives as Christ. It is not a metaphor. It is actually a command. Okay? So, Jesus was ready to give this woman living water. So he offered her living water, this sinner. Living water, he offered this woman. Not only that, but he offered her counsel as he talked to her about her living situation. He changed this woman's entire perspective of who she was, and she went out, and she actually took it upon herself to preach the gospel of Christ, the peace that passes all understanding. Praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that his kindness, which we know as love, was on default. God himself was the word and showed it through his kindness. If you listen and learn, you'll see how he showed this kindness. He has lived a life that reflected this unadulterated, unashamed and untainted true performance of kindness, the epitome of kindness to all men, no matter who, what, or where they were in life. The word says, be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you and me, Ephesians 4.32. What I'm saying is, I'm, I'm saying, why is it that it's so hard to be kind? Why am I continuing to press kindness? What is kindness without patience? What is patience without meekness? What is meekness without humbleness? And humbleness without love. And love, if it be not referred to the magnificent name of our Lord God, it is of but a small portion of our immeasurable God. Please meditate on this throughout the day. Colossians 3, verses 12 to 14 and verse 17. If it's hard to see... Um, then we can bring out our Bibles. I'll wait for everyone to get it so we can look at it together. Colossians 3. Oh, everyone can see it? All right. Colossians 3, verses 12 to 14. It says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, Humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, 
which is the bond of perfectness. Charity, as we know, as love, it's the bond of perfectness. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him and his kindness. I want to close in prayer. I don't, didn't want to keep you guys long. Um, so I just want to pray on kindness. I want us all to stand as we pray about our own hearts and what's in the way of us showing others kindness. What's in the way of us showing love? And I'll pray, and then throughout the day, we can continue to meditate on these words as we pray in our hearts to ask for this kindness that comes through Christ. Dear Lord, our God, our Father, we ask you for kindness. We ask you for the kindness and mercy and love and meekness that you have showed us forgiving and forbearing one another, holding each other up above our own selves, loving each other as you have shown love unto us because this is what you've called us to do. Lord, we thank you for your commands. We thank you for your workmanship. We thank you for your hands. We thank you for everything that you've done for each and every one of us. It is immeasurable. You've come to this earth and you took it upon yourselves, yourself to reach out to each person, to preach to each person, to teach each person, and Lord, to help us all grow in our own understanding of the gospel of Christ. And we thank you, God, for this. Thank you, God, for what you will do through us this day. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.